The impeachment trial that never should have started is not over, but at least it's getting good for our side because, boy, oh boy, they are calling out the hypocrisy. Some videos have been shown, and uh, these videos, oh boy, they are sweet. They are so well done. You know, all week long, Democrats have been showing videos themselves. Look at Donald Trump saying this. Oh, wasn't it horrible? Not showing it to you in context and not revealing that they do the same things themselves, okay? Today was that day. The video presentation, primarily a day of video presentation by uh, President Trump's lawyers. Hey, Dan Scavino is awesome. Very, very talented man. He put together a lot of these videos. He was the social media coordinator in the White House for Donald Trump. He's been working for Donald Trump for years. Anyway, a lot of the videos you're about to see, again, presented uh, before the U.S. Senate or the Joint House or whatever the hell it is. And uh, let's take a look at Exhibit 1. Donald Trump committed a massive crime against our Constitution and our people and the worst violation of the presidential oath of office in the history of the United States of America. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. By telling the mob that their election had been stolen from them. I have an objection because 10 of the 29 electoral votes cast by Florida were cast by electors not lawfully certified. Even then, after that vicious attack, he continued to spread the big lie. I think it's also critical to understand you can run the best campaign and you can have the election stolen from you. This was months of cultivating a base of people who were violent. Praising that violence. And, and everyone beware, they're not gonna let up and they should not. And he still gave that marching orders and quote, fight like hell. Democrats are gonna fight like hell. And we're gonna fight like hell. We'll fight like hell. And we'll fight like hell. But can you imagine telling your supporters that the only way you could possibly lose is if an American election was rigged and stolen from you? And you can have the election stolen from you. And ask yourself whether you've ever seen anyone at any level of government make the same claim about their own election. And you can have the election stolen from you. And in the months, the president made these statements. People listened. Armed supporters surrounded election officials' homes. The Secretary of State. They were shouting threats, you know, to us to, to kill us. We cannot go outside now. It's become so dangerous for us. When he saw firsthand the violence that his conduct was creating, I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. He didn't condemn the violence, incited it further. They're not going to let up, and they should not. Great stuff, right? Great stuff. And the turnaround, I mean, they're actually using um, some of those lawyers who were saying, making their case yesterday, they're including that in the video that the defense is putting forward. Great stuff. Hypocrisy is totally exposed. There's more. I am not showing you this video as some excuse for Mr. Trump's speech. This is not about, this is not whataboutism. I am showing you this to make the point that all political speech must be protected. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. There needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. You've got to be ready to throw a punch. You have to be ready to throw a punch. Donald Trump, I think you need to go back and, and punch him in the face. That I thought he should have punched him in the face. I feel like punching him. I'd like to take him behind the gym if I were in high school. If we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. No, I wish we were in high school, I could take him behind the gym. I will go and take Trump out tonight. Take out now. Okay. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Please. Get up in the face of some Congress people. People will do what they do. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind 
and you will pay the price. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna the This is just a warning to you Trumpers. Be careful, walk lightly. And for those of you who are soldiers, make them pay. If you had to be stuck in an elevator with either President Trump, Mike Pence, or Jeff Sessions, who would it be? Does one of us have to come out alive? <laughs> Again, I did not show you their robust speech to excuse or balance out the speech of my client, for I need not. I showed you the video because in this political forum, all robust speech should be protected, and it should be protected evenly for all of us. By the way, that's Philadelphia lawyer Michael Vanderveen, and he was brilliant today. Common sense guy from outside the Beltway and uh, just magnificent. He led. We heard from Mr. Castro as well. He did an effective job. But a uh, couple more videos. What do you say? We got time. Hit it. And did you tone down the rhetoric last summer when all of this was happening? Did you condemn the rioters? Or did you stand with Nancy Pelosi who said, people are going to do what they're going to do? This is a movement, I'm telling you. They're not going to stop. And, and everyone beware, because they're not going to stop. It is gonna, they're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after. And please, show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. Maybe there will be. It was a violent night in St. Louis. They shot and killed David in cold blood. Destroying property which can be replaced is not violent. This is an apartment complex on fire. And, and it just collapsed. The building just collapsed. I have nowhere to go now. These people did this for no reason. This is just a snapshot of some of the damage the people will be waking up to. Going up, but police clearly... I'm proud of New York, and I'm proud of the protests. <laughs> damage everywhere you look. Honestly, it looks like a war zone. Heartwarming to see so many people turn out peacefully. They keep doing it day after day after day. Fact, our country is a nation of protest. The Patriots were protesters. St. John's Church is on fire. Do you disavow that I was from Antifa? That, that's a myth. Uh, you'll see that's Mr. Schoen, by the way, also a great job. Some of it repetitive. Uh, we saw some of the same images earlier. We see them again, but they're really driving home the message. I think uh, a real judge, a real proceeding, they would have called it all to a halt and said case dismissed. But this is a political show, so it uh, wasn't that easy. All right, I want to skip down uh, to Charlottesville. We actually have been pointing this out for months, but there are people who don't watch Newsmax uh, who don't know that the media, Democrats, um, a huge chunk of our culture, and Joe Biden himself have been continually lying about Charlottesville, deliberately misleading what the president said about that horrible situation that day in the summer of 2017. Joe Biden base his entire campaign on a lie. And you're about to see that lie meticulously revealed. Charlottesville lie. Very fine people on both sides. Except that isn't all he said. And they knew it then, and they know it now. Watch this. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Washington. 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 Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. 
Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now we're going to take down his statue. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats, you got a, you had a lot of bad you had a lot of bad people in the other group too. Unfairly, sir. I'm sorry. I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly. No. I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look, there were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day, it looked like they had some rough, bad people neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this. There are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. But there are two sides to the country. Does anybody have a final? Does anybody have, you have an infrastructure. What makes you think? This might be today the first time the news networks played those full remarks in their context. It's true. You can watch NBC News uh, for years, two years, and you'll never see what you just saw. Now, I played, I played it last night, actually, because I can't emphasize it enough. Joe Biden continues to tell the lie that uh, that moment when Donald Trump said what he said, that's when he knew that he had to save this country and run for president. I couldn't, in my position, on the Greg Kelly Report Show on Newsmax, ever mislead you, the viewer, by taking something out of context that anybody said the way Joe Biden has done to this president. I would never do that, I promise you. And if I do, I'll be sure to correct the record immediately. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up with, uh, ooh, my congressman again, Jerry Nadler. He said something about impeachment back in the 90s, and uh, Donald Trump's lawyers used him as a prime example of the hypocrisy. I leave you with the wise words of Congressman Jerry Nadler. The effect of impeachment is to overturn the popular will of the voters. We must not overturn an election and remove a president from office except to defend our system of government or our constitutional liberties against a dire threat. And we must not do so without an overwhelming consensus of the American people. There must never be a narrowly voted impeachment or an impeachment supported by one of our major political parties and opposed by the other. Such an impeachment will produce the divisiveness and bitterness in our politics for years to come and will call into question the very legitimacy of our political institutions. The American, and they overwhelmingly oppose impeaching him. They elected President Clinton. They still support him. We have no right to overturn the considered judgment of the American people. Mr. Speaker, the case against the president has not been made. <coughs> there is far from sufficient evidence to support the allegations. And the allegations, even if proven true, do not rise to the level of impeachable offenses. Mr. Speaker, this is clearly a partisan railroad job. The same people who today tell us we must impeach the president for lying under oath almost to a person voted last year to re-elect the speaker who had just admitted lying to Congress in an official proceeding. The American people are watching and they will not forget. You may have the votes, you may have the muscle, but you do not have the legitimacy of a national consensus or of a constitutional imperative. This partisan coup d'etat will go down in infamy in the history of this nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back the balance of my time. <laughs> and they pretty much wrap things up, although I think they're taking questions now. 
That was, uh, what, 1999, late 98. Jerry Nadler was right then, and uh, if he said the same thing now, he'd be correct all over again. This is a great big joke. We already know the results. Joe Biden could have avoided all of this, remember? He said he wanted to unify us. I asked him, call it off, but he didn't. He wanted it to go forward because they want to cancel Donald Trump, and that is impossible. By the way, what was Joe Biden doing today? It's kind of embarrassing. They set up a love lawn on the White House. Take a look. at This is not Photoshop. These are real signs. Take it. <laughs> Kindness, healing, compassion. This is all in honor of that phony baloney holiday, which, forgive me, I hate. Uh, I think it was made up by Hallmark, right? Right? I mean, Valentine's Day. It's Sunday. What is this stuff all about? Um, gets even sappier when Joe and Jill walk out to, I don't know, have a little um, time on the love lawn. Okay, it's as sad as it looks, in my opinion. The music is courtesy of us. Um, I, when I saw this came down, come down today, I, uh, I went wild on Twitter. You want to hear some? I think they're pretty good. Does Joe know he's president? Looks like he wants to be Cupid, man of love. Toughen up, Joe. Yeah, that wasn't that good. Oh, this is pretty good. That corny love stunt was really a hit. No, yeah, that actually was pretty weak, too. Ah, here we go. Uh, Joe, please, our enemies are watching. Go inside. <laughs> she goes for that phony pet of the dog. I don't think she's seen that dog in 10 years. <sighs> I don't know. I think this is all a little bit sickening, but um, it is what it is, right? We'll be right back. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.